Hey there traders, welcome back to another daily recap where we start out by identifying levels of support and resistance in the SPY, also known as the spiders, that we use for entering trades in the S&P 500 e-mini futures throughout the day. There is a process and a set of rules that when followed will usually result in profitable trades at these levels. Right now it's 8.30 a.m. Eastern, we've got another hour or so before the market opens. After the closing bell, we come back to this same chart to discuss any trades that may have resulted from today's levels. And any profit gained or loss incurred for the day is logged in a tracking system that we will go over at the end of the video. This way you can see the long-term effectiveness of this trading approach. Before signing off, we'll look at some longer time frames to get an idea of what the near term might look like. From this daily forecast, we'll get an idea of the likely destination of the SPY for the next day or so. Knowing the prevailing trend and likely next destination, along with these daily levels, and the knowledge of how to trade them is a recipe for success. You can see this for yourself by studying the tracking log at the end of the video that covers every trade at every level and goes back several years. Today's levels that are on the board, you can see that we still have this zone from yesterday. It's the area between the dashed lines. I tightened this up a bit, but I believe it's still important. Currently, the pre-market traders have pushed price up and the right underneath this, they're consolidating 560.18 currently at 8.32 a.m. This could mean that they are consolidating underneath this and will have enough energy to power through it and go higher, but there are other areas of overhead resistance before they can get to the former all-time highs. With the right kind of price action, these levels could be tradable areas here, like we discussed in last night's video. And we're back. The closing bell was about an hour ago. As I mentioned in last night's video, I needed a break. Wanted to be away from the screens for some time, so I did not trade today. But the question is, with the levels we had on the board, could you have made money today? And I believe you could have. And here's how the rules worked. First of all, because this is a zone, I'm not going to adjust these levels. It's kind of important where it's at. The idea is, if depending on how price gets to the level or to this zone, it could provide general resistance for a fall away or in this case, they opened right in the middle of it. So really each individual level has its own reasons. As you can see, they're all pretty important, but the SPY kind of messed around these three levels in this zone all day long. So 945, they were above this lower level, this lower part of the zone. So strictly playing by the rules, you would have put an order to go long. They came back down and bounced from 560.50. They didn't do that. You can see 945 is right here, they came down they did come within 10 cents. So here's the low was 560.50. And then they pulled up. So really that's kind of a near miss. I mean, like I'm generally not going to take this for a long trade with this type of action, but they continued higher. And if you had an order to go short, so like if here's your order entry, if SPY is greater than or equal to 561.10, then sell at the market in the E-minis. And same thing up here, 561.75. If you just treated each of these levels independently, you would have been in a short position right here. And then that 10 o'clock data release went up first, would have filled you with this, and then came back down. There's nothing breaking any of the rules if you were in this short position here, held it out, and then even went short here. Now, this, this would be a near miss up here at 561.75. They, they got up close. You can see the high of this candle. What is this? 10, 13 a.m., 561.68. So they're within that range, and then they fell away. That's, that's kind of a trade there. But as you can see, this level was important, gave you plenty of opportunities. But you were in this trade when all that happened at 10 o'clock, this up and down between the levels. There's your two base hits, a base hit on each of these levels. So you can see what they did. I'm not really going to mess with these under the rules that I have for the rest of the trading day. Now, t take a look what happened here. So this level, 563.18, I'll show you where it came from. First of all, 563.17, one penny below this, was a number that came out of my calculator with some formulas I use, but also 563.18 was an important level in and of itself, which I'll show you where that came from, but they couldn't get there. So you can just kind of make the case that, what is this, 562.95, maybe 94, 92, something like that. They, they were rejected there, consolidated, rejected again. So this type of behavior generally is like a consolidation. Normally, if it's just flat like this for a long time, and that means they're going to build up some energy to go through the level. So I'm not sure I would have wanted to trust this level. I mean, it's not an issue because the SPY never got to 563.18. But I find it interesting after being rejected a few times, they just sort of fell away and ended up closing down here somewhere. And maybe they, maybe there's reasons that they pushed them down and wanted them to close them. They wanted to close the day and the week down here somewhere. But anyway, in terms of this level, it's no harm, no foul because it wasn't hit. Really just two base hits. That's all there was if you're playing by the rules. So zooming out to a daily chart. 
they opened below some resistance, got through it, as you see, came back down. So, you know, they're pretty healthy. I mean, this is, it's, it's still bullish. There was been bullish when we started the day. The fact that they went up isn't too surprising because they're still bullish. They're above the moving averages and they're just testing these, these highs here. And if you look at the weekly chart, I find this kind of interesting. We can talk about that trend line later, but so the, what was it? The open of this week here. Um, yeah, the open was 563.18. Remember, I had this level at 563.17. And so they, they came up short of that. It was going to provide resistance. Generally, it closes of, of weeks and days do provide some type of uh, meaning to the market. But I just find that interesting that that was with it a penny away, and that's kind of where they stalled out. But this is very strong, and they closed above the, uh, the high of this previous week. So there's nothing bearish about this chart. They've got to get above obviously the all-time highs where they can bust ahead. And here's here's an important trend line, which maybe I'll talk about that next week. We'll see what happens Monday morning in the pre-market and see what they're doing overnight. And of course, we have the FOMC announcement next week on Wednesday. So interesting time, interesting place, but it is what it is. Over here on the tracking log, the first one is playing by the rules. Here it is, level that was uh, not triggered because of the near miss. You would have been on the long side. They came down, never really gave it to you. But you could, could have went short at the other two levels, averaging together. And got a base hit on each of those eight points. As you know, I didn't take any trades. And uh, anyway, this is just a snapshot of the last two weeks. Of course, these totals and averages represent everything that's in this log going back from the beginning of 2022 to now. So thanks for watching. And we'll be back at it on Monday with new levels. Have a great weekend. Talk to you next week.